good y'all welcome back welcome back welcome back how you guys doing how are you guys doing happy thursday it's pretty early i'm actually recording this a bit earlier than usual it is sorry sorry in my eye jesus christ it's it is 11 50 a.m uh hope you guys are doing great hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing like i always say um also i did make a post just in regards to a q a i will be doing so get your questions in it should be on, on the channel. Just look at my recent post or whatever. Get your questions in. That's going to be the little 2K special because we are getting very close to 2K subs. Shouts out to y'all again for liking the video, subbing, and joining it. I am hugely appreciating hanging out with you guys, you know, communicating with you guys through your comment session. I'm learning, I'm learning a lot about F1. I'm still, you know, it's going to take time. Like, it's going to take time regarding names and all of that, but we're good. It's, we're good. So we have rating, Mick. Schumacher's they debut season. Also, I did see that the Japanese Grand Prix is this weekend. I was thinking about possibly doing a live stream on Saturday, just over the free practice. I I, I want to do the qualifying, but I'm not, I'm not really going to be around on Friday to do that. So unfortunately, I can't do that. But if you guys, but if you guys are interested, on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., it's going to be the second free practice at the Jam. Oh. Japanese Grand Prix, 10 a.m. ESPN News. So if you guys are, are willing to do that, let me know. I get everything set up for that. We can you know, enjoy it, have fun, check out the practice, really engage with you guys, really test my knowledge of the sport. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into to the video. Shouts out to man, John Warren. Let's get Once started. Again, sponsored by the wonderful people at Squarespace. It goes without saying that being the son of Michael Schumacher brings with Schumacher. it a lot of pressure. But if there's anyone who can deal with that pressure, it's Mick. Having won both the FIA Formula 3 and Formula 2 championships, he began his Formula 1 career at the beginning. Uh, Formula 2 is... So, is Formula 2 like a lower division, I guess? Is that like, you know, like, like the minor leagues, I'm guessing? <laughs> you guys let me know. I know you guys beginning of the year with Haas. The only problem is, Haas are a team so slow, and Mazepin is a teammate so useless that's that nice it's been difficult to gauge how good his time so far in Formula 1 has been. So, let's fix that, shall we? <laughs> Chill out. Oh, my bad. Now, of course, I don't have access to all the data that F1 teams have, but I do have access to one Nikita Mazepin and a Haas VF21. Or at least their Wikipedia pages. Same thing. So in this video, I'm going to use those two metrics and some others where I see fit to try and answer the question, how well has Mick Schumacher's debut season gone? First things first, let's talk about the bad points. I'm guessing this is Sorry for raining year. on your parade, Mick fans, but this stuff's got to be said. According to a totally reliable source I found on Reddit, Mick Schumacher has caused over $1.4 million worth of damage to the car. While Damn! Nikita I see both us, both his, both eyes at two million in damages. Golly, for your debut season to be second in damages, uh, that's not good. That is not good. But I think we are, you know, I think we are going to get into why that's the case. But ooh. To Mazepin has caused a mere 600,000. Crashing isn't really something we've seen from Mick Schumacher before, as in the junior formulas, he was always quite consistent. But whether it be the boat-like handling of the VF21 or the huge power difference between it and the F2 car he'd been driving last year, Schumacher spent a fairly large proportion of his first few races in the wall. Both he and yeah. Mazepin spun on the first lap of the Bahrain Grand Prix, although it must be said that Schumacher managed to keep it going while Mazepin's debut lasted barely one braking zone. Hey, in Imola, he spun in the race, but so did zone? both of his fellow rookies. So it's excusable, I guess. A large proportion of the damaged costs have come from two crashes in Monaco and Hungary, respectively. And the worst thing about them was that they were in FP3, so he really didn't need to be pushing as hard as he was. He also spun his way out of his first ever Q2 session in France, but I'm starting to feel mean now, so let's take some time <laughs> to reset our emotions with an ad break. If you need a website, then you need Squarespace. Simple as that. Having a good looking blog, portfolio, online store, or whatever it is you're doing with a website in 2021 is just as important as what you're putting on that website. You could have the most incredible nice piece paint. of modern art for sale, but if your website doesn't look the part, then nobody's gonna give it a second look. Which is why you need Squarespace. I've told you this before, but in case you've forgotten, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your website and getting a domain to host it on. Every single Squarespace template will work with what you want to do with yeah, it. 
So if you want a bright pink border around your super serious piece of work, then who's going to stop you? If you want to have a play around with what Squarespace can do for you, then just head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to hit publish, go to squarespace.com slash John Warren and use code John Warren for 10% off your first website or domain. But anyway, back to Mick. In terms of what's been good this season, I'm going to need a lot longer than I did for the bad points to list. Firstly, he's never been outqualified by Nikita Mazepin. While he was technically outqualified in Monaco and Hungary, I'm not going to count them, as Mazepin didn't even have to set a lap to outqualify Mick in either Mazepin. of them. As long as he left the garage, he'd have been ahead. In garage. terms of races, things it's have garage. been a bit more it's similar between garage. the two, by garage. virtue of Mazepin threatening to put him in the wall every time he's trying to get past. But I'm not here to complain about Mazepin, as much as it may seem that way on this channel. Earlier on, I mentioned that Schumacher spun out of being able to compete in Haas's first Q2 session of the season. But let me rephrase that. Mick Schumacher put a Haas in Q2 on merit. Haas are very open about their disregard for 2021, and they've been convincingly the slowest team on the grid, often by margins of a whole second. And Mick Schumacher took that car into Q2 at the most demanding track on the calendar. I don't care that he crashed. That's some achievement. <laughs> now, he finished 19th in the race, that's because Haas is shit. Another of his amazing qualifying <laughs> performances came in Turkey, where he put that's it into Q2 like and beat Mazepin by last. a margin of almost three seconds. Again, the Haas car did Haas things in the race, and he came home P19, but that was only really because he was torpedoed by an angry Fernando Alonso in the opening stages of the race. In the races, he went through a phase of beating Mazepin by a margin of over 50 seconds for fun, which is basically a second a lap every single lap of every single race. Not too bad, huh? Nowadays, those margins aren't as big, but it doesn't take a genius to realize that this isn't because Mick has forgotten how to drive. But anyway, I've sort of gone off topic here, so let's try and pluck some numbers out of thin air to answer the title of this video. A bit like AWS does, but with some actual logic applied. I headed over to racefans.com and had a look at this probably accurate table, which told me that the average qualifying gap between Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin is 0.923 seconds in Mick's favor which is a lot. In fact, the only divide worse than this one is the one between Vettel and Stroll, which is apparently 2.7 seconds. Hmm. This whole logical thing isn't really holding up that well, looking at these numbers, so let's ignore that one, eh? In terms of racing, Nikita Mazepin hasn't had a single lap inside the top 10, while Schumacher has had 2 laps in 8th, 11 laps in 9th, and 11 laps in 10th. And that's not too of bad. course, these didn't ever amount to points, but it's still a good indicator of how Schumacher's able to keep his car inside of the pit stop window of the other cars for longer, thanks to better pace. As for races classified as... Comp I'm sorry, I'm still I'm still just crazy about how he is he accustomed so much damage, but... I mean, I don't... I mean, I'm not sure. I don't think he has won a race yet, but, I, but I'm, I'm also assuming this, this is his first year as well. So, I mean, he's had some, you know, some position in which he, he was in the top 10, but maybe his teammate isn't up to speed. He did say earlier that, you know, earlier in the video that, you know, a couple of issues going on, but that is a lot of stress and pressure. You know, the son of one, you know, the best F1 drivers of all time. You having to carry that pressure on you. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Completed, Look Schumacher Michael has Jordan one more event his too, kids. with three races Sorry finishing on the lead lap versus two for Mazepin. Although I dedicated the opening of this video to talking about his crashes, Schumacher's also finished more races than Mazepin, which is a good indicator that he doesn't make mistakes when it really counts, and is therefore dealing with the pressure a lot better. In terms of his lap ones, Schumacher has a net game of 14, showing he's a good starter. Although, yeah. when you're starting from second last every race, it's really not that impressive to yeah. not have lost positions. <laughs> but then again... He gained positions. That's true, in a though. Has. So to cut a lot of waffles. Okay, so I, I'm also assuming has H A A S isn't that great of a car. I'm assuming because he's like in has like. Is that a bad thing? Like, <laughs> are those cars not that great? Well, let me just give you my thoughts on the question. Essentially, I think that Mick Schumacher's debut season has been good, but not impressively good. The reason mm. I say this is because of the immense expectation I've had for him it's when he first the year, sport, though. and the fact that he's lived up to that expectation in my mind. Ultimately, when you're in a car as unbelievably terrible as the Haas, the only comparison oh, okay. that can reach. So yeah, that car is shit. <laughs> we, we get it now. The Haas, car, the Haas car is shit. Reasonably be drawn is between you and your teammate, Haas. and Mick has very much succeeded in that task. Sure, he's had his moments in those crashes, but he's always got back on his feet. And again, Mazepin's had the exact same moments at other points in the season, which signifies to me that the VF21 is not an easy car to drive. 
To compare Schumacher's career to his father's, as some people have done, is always going to be an unfair comparison. I told you. Not only are I they not it. racing directly against one another, making it a hard comparison, but it's also unfair on Mick to put that sort of pressure on him. There's a reason he raced under his mother's maiden name in cards, because otherwise the pressure on him to be just as good as Michael would likely have crippled him. Now yeah. he is of course publicly a Schumacher, but more than that he's a racing driver. He's unusual in being the son of Michael, but that doesn't make him any less of his own driver. After right. all, he reached F1 by winning the F2 championship which being oh, the son of michael oh okay so I'm, I'm guessing you have to to go into f1 you have to i guess do well in f2 to get promoted up i'm i'm assuming I'm, I'm assuming. Does not automatically grant you. Don't, don't quote anyway, me. I'm, I'm just, now. So yeah, just my Mick's guess. debut season was good. I hope that next year Haas will put together a half-decent car so we can actually see him fighting other people, but sadly, I don't think the chances of that happening are very high. But what do you think? Have you been impressed by Mick Schumacher this year? Yeah, you let guys me know let me your know. Are you guys impressed below. with him? I couldn't Thank tell you. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all later. Like I said, I couldn't tell you, but <laughs> hopefully you guys let me know how good he's been doing this year. Anyway, great 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 video I've learned a lot about mick um he won an f2 so that's pretty pretty impressive um but like i said i think i think with him he's also gonna have that pressure on him to do great but it's still early you know what i mean like still early it gives me at least another year year or so and you know make your decision off then but anyway you guys don't get like a sub come up with your thoughts and reactions don't forget the Q&A, add your questions. See you guys later.